Thursday, Great Britain will go to the polls in an eagerly anticipated election. One of the big political debates this year concerns the Union. The 2021 elections will see Scotland and Wales elect new governments. For Scotland, a good set of results for the SNP could signal the green light for India F2. In Wales, there is potential for Plaid Cymru to prop up Labour in a minority government. Politics.co.uk spoke to election expert Sir John Curtis about the state of the union and who the winners and losers might be in the 2021 elections. We do have a UK government which I think it's fair to say is, has been less respectful of the existing devolution settlement than any of its predecessors, including previous Conservative administrations. That does mean that we can see how the debate about the future of the Union, both as a result of Brexit and as a result of the pandemic, um, certainly has got new life into it, new evidence into it, um, and is probably something that is indeed going to continue to be shaped and reshaped uh, during the course of the future. In 2019, the polls began to pick up the fact that support for independence had gone up, and all of the increase in support for independence registered at that time occurred amongst Remain voters. And so we, we saw basically the character of support for independence is changed. It's now linked to Brexit and attitudes towards the European Union in the way that it wasn't before. And B, there is no escaping the conclusion, whatever your political preference, that the pursuit of Brexit has undermined the level of support for the Union uh, here north of the border. Um, that took us basically to 50-50 by the time the UK left the European Union and that is still where we are at now and there is still a big gap between Remain and Leave supporters on uh, this issue. So far as voters on this side, the Great Britain side of uh, the, the Irish Sea, um, keeping Northern Ireland in the Union has not for many been a high priority. Um, and you know, quite, uh, quite recently, Sunday Times did a nice poll where uh, they polled all four nations. Yes, rather more people said they'd be unhappy than happy if Northern Ireland were to leave the UK. But actually, the proportion of people who would be unhappy about Northern Ireland leaving the UK was markedly lower than when the same question was asked about Scotland or Wales. For many people on this side of the Irish Sea, Northern Ireland is thought of as a little bit of a country apart rather different with which they do not necessarily feel um, a, a great deal of empathy. So I don't think we should exaggerate the extent to which voters, including not least Leave voters, kind of people who are voting for the Conservative Party, are necessarily wedded to the idea that Northern Ireland should remain part of the Union. I think the honest truth is that there clearly is now more of a debate in Wales about independence, but we should also bear in mind that in Wales, at least, we are talking about a constitutional argument in which there are still non-trivial proportions of people on both sides of the argument. Now, what I mean by that is this. Yes, if you ask now in Wales the question, you know, should Wales be an independent country, the same question that appeared on the ballot paper in Scotland in 2014, you can get around 25% of people or so saying, yes, they'd vote in favour, though that's still only half the figure that it, it would be up here. But equally, if you ask the question, should the Senate be abolished, you can also get around 25% of people say that they are in favour. Whereas, frankly, you would hardly get anybody at all up here taking the same view about Hollywood. So the truth is, you know, we may well see in this election the, uh, a party committed to abolishing the Welsh Assembly, getting representation, as well as Plaid are probably doing relatively well as they tend to do in Senate elections as well. So we are talking here about uh, a country which is still much more divided and fragmented on the issue of constitutional change. And yes, there is more debate, but I think the truth is that unless and until Scotland leaves the Union, then I think Wales is going to be part of the Union. Of course, if Scotland were to leave the Union, then yes, new questions would be raised. Although, of course, what I think is also fairly wide acknowledged is that, you know, whatever are the arguments about Scotland's ability to survive as a separate economy, etc., etc., which, of course, is a controversial subject, um, I think it's difficult to avoid the argument that Wales' tax base is weaker than Scotland's and that, therefore, for Wales, 
the economic challenge will be arguably even greater than whatever you might consider it to be for Scotland. That's a difficult question because the, the big winners could be the SNP. And if it is the SNP, then irrespective of how well the Conservatives do in England and Wales, the Conservatives will not have had a good set of, local, good, good set of elections. Right? Um, meanwhile, um, Labour at the moment at least do seem to be batting on a rather sticky wicket and are at risk of finding themselves forced to a deal with, with Plaid in Wales, still coming third in Scotland and actually losing significant ground in quite a lot of the council elections. So it could be difficult for them as well. Equally, however, the SNP don't get an overall majority um, and the Conservatives do well in these elections, then Boris Johnson may find, you know, remember just a few months ago, quite a lot of muttering about Boris and whether or not he would make it all the way to 2023 and 2024. Maybe, you know, there are clear net gains for the Conservatives uh, in the elections. Uh, the SNP have been seen off and Boris probably in those circumstances is secure all the way through to the next general election. So to that extent at least, quite a lot resting for quite a lot of leaders in the course of the next three weeks.